Okay, hello to everyone and welcome to this uh, Friends of Multilateralism group uh, interview series on WM12 and beyond. Uh, FMG is a group established in 2016, uh, promoting multilateralism, WTO reform and economic growth. And today we have the honor to have Mr. Uh, John Denton, the Secretary General of the International Chamber of Commerce uh, with us. And uh, we look forward to listening to him uh, about the business pers perspective uh, about EMS Health and the, the way beyond, as well as uh, his message to the ministers right now negotiating. So, Ms. John Denton, welcome to our uh, interview series. Thanks for being with us. Uh, right now, the WTO is doing its MC12 and more than 100 ministers are right now negotiating uh, already for two days. We heard that they have made some progress, but also some serious gaps still remains. So it, it is decided that they will extend the ministerial conference to another day. Uh, so this is really, in English, you call the 11th hour of the M12 and the negotiations. So being the Secretary General uh, of the ICC, what's your message to the minister uh, now? Uh, and what's your perspective on M12 and beyond? Thank you. Uh, first of all, thanks very much for having me on the, on the call. But also, uh, uh, we are a friend of multilateralism. In fact, uh, from us at ICC, uh, an effective multilateral system is critical to enabling commerce to operate across borders. And really, we know how much benefit that has actually served the global community, uh, local communities, uh, families. And uh, the tragedy we see at the moment is that one of the key underpinnings for global commerce, which is effective curation through uh, a public institution like the WTO, is on a precipice. And so my message to ministers, and you know, there are a hundred ministers there. They should be representing a level of global power, but at the moment, they're not deploying that global power in a way that can actually achieve an outcome which will be satisfactory. So my message to them is to show leadership. They need to show leadership and urgently, you say 11th hour, you know, and that they've been negotiating for two days. The reality, this has been going on for some time. We have worked diligently to prepare the ground for agreement to be reached on a number of key areas. And it's up to the political leadership now to deploy political capital to bring this home. But they are locked in, in a, into inertia. They are not showing the leadership required. And they've got to look beyond their narrow self-interest and actually recognize the importance of enabling a system that produces results for their citizens. That's what we want, that's what we demand. If they can't agree on some pretty basic issues, like limiting subsidies on illegal fishing, like agreeing to talk about WTO reform, which affects all our lives in the end, or even on maintaining the moratorium, on putting tariffs on data flows cross border, I mean, really, this is an, an institution devoted to open economy, and they're actually thinking about putting a restriction on global trade. What kind of planet are these people living on? They are not focused on the global interest. And in not focusing on the global interest, they're actually undermining their own national interests, and they're undermining the prosperity and future of their own citizens. If they can't do this, then the WTO, as they convene it, will be officially broken. And that is not the outcome that we seek. We seek exactly the reverse. We seek a WTO of the future, not a WTO that's locked into irrelevancy, which is effectively what these 100 ministers are condemning it to, despite the best endeavours of the global business community, despite the best endeavours of the Director General of the WTO, Dr. Ngozi. The system needs to hold. It's critical we have a WTO that works as it un un underpins international commerce, as I said. A world without an effective WTO is a really bleak prospect, particularly coming on top of the challenges businesses face with COVID-19, with the challenges with the supply chain, with the regional conflict having global implications out of Ukraine, Russia. These issues all compound. And to layer upon this, a failure of the WTO, shame on you. Show the leadership that is required. Look beyond your narrow national interests to the actual interests of your citizens 
and stop playing politics. We know that there are countries there that are actually see this as an opportunity to sabotage the WTO. But that is an act of self-harm. And we need, under, and need ministers to understand that. And we need this to be called out for what it is. Because failure here is going to cause ma massive aftershocks to the system. Yes, we will go on. But the WTO will maintain the irrelevancy that has actually shown over the last couple of years. We provided an opportunity here to create opportunities for improvement of the position. Those opportunities at the moment, at the 11th hour, are not being seized. There are three roads out of here. The first is compromise, which will provide relevance for the, IC, for the WTO. The second is kind of muddling together something which looks acceptable. The third is the dead end. And it looks like the ministers, the 100 ministers present in Geneva are condemning the WTO to a dead end. We are going to have to work like hell to find ways through that. Let's make certain that the WTO ministers, their members and also the ministers present, do not give up on the world in pursuit of their own national narrow interests as they perceive it and understand better the global interests and the way that can actually play out to help their communities, help their citizens. That's what we call for. That's what we want. And that's actually what we are demanding right now. Thank you, Mr. Denton. That's a very clear cut message. So my takeaway from you is that the WTO system as an organization still matters a lot to the business and to the common citizens, but it needs to be reformed and needs to be better. And that's why the ministers uh, 100 also right now should uh, play by leadership role and make it happen to reform the WTO and to do agree on many things that, that they're putting on the table. But of course, you also point out that the way forward that definitely the last one that, that uh, to, 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 to enter into a dead end is not a choice. Uh, as you said, put, uh, uh, clearly that without this, the business would go ahead. But of course, if WTO could be reformed, do better, make more rules, that will be much better for, for you as business uh, sector. Uh, of course, we, we know that, as you said, behind the, your business, your companies, they are common citizens, the employees who are watching all this. So I hope that uh, this yeah, message will be sent just, to them. But just to make one other point, I mean, yeah. when I talk about the economic opportunities presented, and I talk about the challenges that the global world confronts, I mean, you don't have to go very far to look at the, um, uh, I suppose, forecast in terms of economic activity, and they're all going negative. Uh, uh, the opportunities of the WTO, which can be seized, can help push economic growth. Mm -hmm. And for heaven's sake, to actually even be contemplating putting a break on the digital economy through failure to maintain the moratorium on applying tariffs on uh, uh, data, data transfers across borders is just beyond belief. To sabotage the global economy in the narrow interests of one or two groups, this is just beyond what we would say is any way of describing effective political leadership. It is beyond belief that people are actually putting the WTO, the global business community and the global citizenship in this position. Yeah, that's, that's actually what you mean by by saying that to play leadership beyond your narrow national, national interests. Yeah, I think you have to put the whole global community and the cit uh, common citizens uh, into your, your consideration. So thank you very much, Mr. Denton. And we uh, thank you very much for being with us. And we look forward for future opportunities to engage you and your colleagues. Thank you very much. And congratulations on the Friends of Multilateralism. We need it. Thank you very much. We have very, very good friends here, both Chris and Damien, uh, are very good uh, participants of our group. So we look forward to work with, with them in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Okay, bye-bye. I don't want to know. Hi, John. Just left. Um, so